Hey everyone, today I'm doing a skill breakdown for Sir K. I thought it was about time I got around to covering him because he's one of the few characters everyone is going to get and everyone is going to use to some degree at least for a few missions. He is the first character you unlock in the game and even so he's actually also a fairly unique character amongst his fellow champions. He has a couple of interesting traits that I think are worth m mentioning. He has the talented trait, which makes it so learning active skills only costs one skill point. So because of this, it's a lot easier to get more active skills on your hotbar with him. And this is definitely a strength early on in the game. He's a very strong early game champion because of this. You can just more quickly get a lot of the upgrades you want. This is only for active skills and not passives. So keep that in mind when you're trying to pick out your skills. And he even has a facility title here to provide a bonus when he's assigned to the hospice. This upgrade isn't like huge, but it definitely helps. His negative trait though is a little tricky. Minus one loyalty when going on a mission without full vitality. If you're playing on the higher difficulties, hard or very hard, early in the game, before you really sort of get your ball rolling, you find yourself taking vitality damage a lot easier and a lot more often. So to prevent yourself from losing a lot of loyalty on this character, you find yourself having to stick him in the hospice even if he's only missing one vitality. So that can make him a little annoying to use at the same time. Enough of an intro though, let's just start talking about his skills. In tier 1, he has the mostly standard stuff with one exception for the basic stuff. Of course, we have the strike for 4 AP, 100% damage, open wounds causes bleeding, 15% dot, and bleed is actually very good early on in the game, so this is a decent upgrade if... Because I generally consider Sir Kane early game champion, I don't use him much later in the game, not that he can't be, so this is a good upgrade to go with. Strong Grip, plus 15% weapon damage, Reeling Blow for 20% vulnerability, and Glory Kill to reduce your cooldowns by 1 after killing an enemy with Strike. For his unique ability, this is an ability he shares with only two other heroes in the game, I believe, Death Strike. This is a very high damage ability, 170% base damage. I'm pretty sure that's the highest in the game, but it has minus 20% armor breaking, so even on a champion who has higher than normal armor breaking, this can very easily break no armor, and it gets damage penalties for each point of armor that they have, so you only want to use this if they have no armor. It's okay using it if they're maybe prone or getting a backstab, but it's still generally no armor. With upgrades, Rending Blow increases this by another 15% to the weapon damage, Bloodletting for another bleed effect, Swiftness to reduce the cost by 1, which brings it down to 4, so now it costs the same amount as a normal strike, and then Fast Recovery reduce the cooldown by 1, so now with a cooldown of 1 you can use this every turn. This is a very good move for just dealing raw damage, but it's just situational, so you need to be careful to not use this when armor is present. Then we have the standard cleave, 75% damage to the three tile wide area, bleeder for more bleeding, severing blow plus 20% damage to the center target, momentum for 15% damage to all targets, and then hack and slash giving it knockback. This is primarily a defensive talent choice. Of course we have rage, which is the sort of hallmark passive ability for champions. 10% stackable weapon damage for two turns after every kill, plus 5% to this damage bonus with extended rage, giving it 15%. Anger management, it lasts an extra one turn. Bloodlust, you now get AP back on your kills to help extend the turn longer. And blood rage, you get some HP back when you get a kill. This is never really super high scaling wise, in my opinion, so usually not something you take unless you just have an extra skill point laying around. Then for the last three passives, Juggernaut plus 5% damage for each tile you move. Champions struggle a lot with mobility, especially early game, so this is to help compensate for that. They're much stricter on their AP economy compared to other classes as well, so this really kind of helps make up for some of that when you go chasing after a target. Extra bleeding plus 50% weapon damage for bleeding effects, and strength 10% more weapon damage. This is 
decent along with all the bleed effects you can get because like i said early game bleed damage is actually pretty good it starts to fall off a lot more later in the game unless you really build into it tier two Again, mostly standard with one sort of key difference, starting with something they all have, power attack, 150% weapon damage with plus 15% armor breaking. This, I think, is, you know, an extremely good ability, and honestly, I think it's better than Death Strike, so if you're building your character and you're trying to decide between the two, I would go with power attack. It's 20% less damage, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things especially when we get to some of the upgrades it's not a big difference but the major thing is this damage doesn't get mitigated by armor and it also has plus 15 percent armor break it's completely unparalleled with the type of armor break this ability offers it's extremely useful all the time as opposed to situationally for just slightly less damage with the upgrade ready to purge reduce the ap cost and how it is four similar to a basic attack Vulnerability for a 30% vulnerability debuff, so now they're taking 30% more damage as you continue to swing on them. Initiator, plus 25% weapon damage if they're at full HP and vitality, making this a strong opener move. And this is kind of what I was talking about, how it really helps narrow the gap down between these two moves even more. And Stunning Blow, if you want to add a little bit of utility to the move, bring the cost back up to 5 or 6, I guess, if you're not taking Ready to Purge. And you get a stun on it. You definitely don't want to take this if you're not taking Ready to Purge. And probably what's the best ability champions have access to is Earthshaker. 120% weapon damage along a 4 tile range is the initial range that can't be blocked, goes through obstacles, goes through terrain, can hit enemies on the other side of a wall for instance. It's absolutely amazing giving champions some form of range attack that can hit multiple enemies. With the upgrade of Magnitude, it causes knockback. This, I don't think, is great even as a defensive tool because it's a line attack generally, so you're not going to get many enemies that are close up where you generally want to knock them back. I mean, I guess there is something to be said about keeping some distant enemies even more distant. There's just better upgrades, I think, for any champion build to invest into actually dealing damage. With Ground Surge, plus 15% weapon damage, Earth Splitter plus two range this gives it that six range and stumble now it causes a slow we have vengeance which is plus 10 percent weapon damage against enemies that hit sir k this is just a useful damage buff to try and get your first initial kill rolling and start getting those rage stacks a lot of the upgrades here are sort of high risk high reward and revolve around having less health i don't really prefer this kind of style i think it's unnecessary but they are admittedly powerful if you want to follow into this the first one is Berserk, plus 2 AP. If you have no HP, that's a very significant AP boost. Avenger, this one's actually a pretty universal one that you can take pretty much all the time. Plus 1 AP if you took at least 2 hits. This is very easy to do, and these 2 hits can be like shots from archers or just some like little weak scrub that hits you for like no damage. This is very easy to trigger. There's no reason not to really take this. Frenzy. You do more damage the less HP you have with up to 30% with no HP, and 30% is a huge amount. So again, very powerful if you want to try this out. I've never really liked it. And Combat Fever, plus 5 Unbreakable Armor if you have no HP. This is okay. You're definitely going to want more Unbreakable Armor from other sources to really make this worth it, because by the end game, 5 is not enough to matter. And obviously the kind of style they're trying to promote here is you have no HP, but you have a bunch of unbreakable armor, or just even regular armor, so that way you're still not actually taking damage. Getting to his unique ability, I believe he shares this with one other character? Maybe two, but the only other one I can think of is the uh, Red Knight. And this is a really good utility move. It's super cheap and super low cooldown, very low damage, 25%, but it applies knockback, so it's a good defensive maneuver. With snap kick upgrade, reduce the cost by one, that's what brings it down to two. For three, I think this is definitely not worth it. Power kick, add 25% weapon damage, so now it's 50, which makes it okay, but that's not the main use of this move, and I like to lean into the strengths of something rather than trying to shore up the weakness if I have 
a choice, especially with limited resources. With Numbing Attack, the target has one less AP on their turn, so you're just strengthening the CC you're putting on them. And even more so with Knee Breaker, you now apply Knockdown. So when you kick them, you knock them back, and they are knocked down similar to Shield Charge, and they also have one less AP afterwards. So this is a very good sort of spammable CC that you can apply at close range, and it's very powerful. Knockdown is one of the strongest status effects you can use on an enemy because of the huge damage bonuses you get against a knocked down target. For his last two passives, Armorer, reduce that AP penalty off of heavy armor sigils. You definitely want this to lighten that AP strictness on your champions. And Robust, 10% vitality, HP and physical debuff resist if you just want to add some more tankiness to your champion. In tier 3, he has the sort of standard Whirlwind ability, 120% weapon damage to all adjacent units. So there's some very high multi-hit potential here, but I found in my experience the average is around 3. And granted, they can be spread out around you, unlike Cleave, where they kind of need to be next to each other. This is 6 AP, which is a lot. That's 50% more than Cleave for not a huge amount more damage. is 120% versus... 95 or 90 I guess for standard and then 105 for the center so I'm not a big fan of this move cooldown of 3 AP cost of 6 like I said it's just very expensive with bleeding wounds you can cause bleed with knockback you can apply knockback raging wind increase the damage by 15% so now it's 135 which makes it a little better, and then Bladestorm reduced the cost by 1, so now it's 5 AP for 135%. I think with those two upgrades, it's definitely much more admissible, much more efficient, but the main reason I don't really use this move a whole lot is because of the passives you also get in Tier 3. Just And this applies for every champion. One of those first passives is Damage Focus. The hero gains plus 5% weapon damage for each unspent AP from the previous turn. With save strength you get one additional AP conserved into your next turn for every three that you conserve in the current one. This just lets you get more AP carrying over into the next round, more than the standard three other classes can save. This really helps alleviate the AP strictness on champions by sort of hunkering down one turn and then just going nuts on the next. You can get that damage boost up to 8% with Smite the Weak. Readiness gives you scaling armor amount up to five at max level for every three unspent AP and this really helps create a good defensive turn for your champions. And then focused watch, you can end your turn using overwatch instead of the just end my turn, skip my turn button and still get the bonuses from damage focus and its upgrades. Next is melee expertise where you get two unbreakable armor and five debuff resistance of both types for each adjacent enemy. This is okay, and definitely something you're going to want to take if you want to try, you know, these uh, Vengeance upgrades and make a build around that. But there's an amazing upgrade on this ability called Killing Spree. Whenever you kill a unit, you get a free strike skill. And this upgrade alone is the main reason why I generally don't take Whirlwind, because I can get a similar effect for cheaper using Killing Spree. If I just kill one enemy, I get free swings on the other enemies around me, and if they're weak enough, I just kill them for free and it was for two less AP. It's just more efficient. The following upgrade, Combat Specialist, plus 5% weapon damage for each adjacent enemy. It makes what I just described that much easier. Heat of the Battle, plus 1 AP for each adjacent enemy above 2, so that means a minimum of 3 to get that first AP bonus. This is useful, champions find themselves surrounded by enemies a fair amount of the time, so extra AP definitely helps them. And Overdrive, all cooldowns are reduced by 1 if the hero starts their turn outnumbered. Just useful if you have some abilities like Whirlwind, for example, they're surrounded, you can more easily get your cooldowns back and start murdering them. He has one last unique ability in Tier 3, called Preparedness. And unfortunately, unlike his other two, I do not think this is a good move. I would avoid taking this on any sort of build you're trying to do with Sir K. It consumes all of your AP, and for every two that you consume with this move, you get a counterattack. So, in theory, it is better AP efficiency for your attacks. It's 50% cheaper attacks. But it's a counterattack, which means they have to hit you first. 
and that just means you're taking a lot of hits to deal damage back and what if you can serve like 8 AP, right? That's four counterattacks, and you only get hit twice. Well, then half your AP just went to waste. Or what if you only get hit by ranged units that are out of range? Then nothing. I mean, there's just a lot of ways for this to end up doing nothing, and when it does do something, you're having to take damage first. I would rather just kill them on my own turn and not take hits instead of taking hits to then kill them on their turn. Even with the upgrades, I just don't see why you would want to do this. But going into them, in case maybe you see some potential here, I don't. Unbreakable Preparedness also grants plus 6 armor against incoming attacks at the hero counterattacks. So this does help against that thing I was mentioning about having to take damage to dish it back. Unfortunately, in the late game, especially in higher difficulties, this, while helps reducing damage, definitely won't stop it. Especially after you've taken multiple hits. Maybe the first couple... Loose Stance, reduce the cooldown by one, so I guess you can use this more often, two turns. High Guard, Preparedness also reduces incoming damage by 20%, while the hero has unspent counterattacks left, again, kind of helping address that issue of having to take damage to dish it back. And Retribution, plus 50% weapon damage for the counterattacks, so you're technically doing more damage. The upgrades do help incentivize it some and try to shore up some of the weaknesses from it, but again, I just don't see the point. <laughs> Just kill them on your own turn. Champions don't really struggle with that. For the last passives, we have extra stun, plus 50% efficiency for stuns and slows. Obviously, you're only going to take this if you're taking the stun and slow upgrades on this ability, or at least one of them. Hardened armor, reduce armor loss by 20%, just adding a bit more tankiness. An extra area damage, plus 20% weapon damage for skills that do AoE damage, so... Even if you're not taking Whirlwind, you're definitely taking Earthshaker and you have to take Cleave. That ability is baked into a skill tree even if you do a respec. So, And that wraps it up for the skill breakdown on Sir K. He's definitely interesting. He has three unique abilities, one in each tier, so I think that's really cool, especially since he's the first champion every player is going to get. And he has some good traits that definitely incentivize you to keep him around at least through the first act maybe even the second one personally there's just other champions i like more and end up switching off of him to use them instead but i do know some people are huge sir k fans they swear by him and he's definitely usable throughout the entire game i mean there's no problem with him again personally it's just my own personal taste i like other heroes better but after seeing this full skill breakdown for yourself, maybe this will help you decide if you want to give him the chance to run him through the bulk of the game, and maybe you'll become a Sir K fan as well. I hope this was useful, and thanks for watching.